see. We've got a dead patient, most likely from food poisoning. We've got dogs being bled out in lavatories. We've got people with anemia puking from eating raw liver. We've got a whole lot of Nobel Prizes being given out like candy. And now we've got some guy named Smith deciding that there's some anecdotal factor in the liver of an ox that's now a magical vitamin. 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 You ask 10 different people what they believe about vitamin B12 and you'll get 10 different answers. It's a bacteria. It's a vitamin. It's a bacteria that turns into a vitamin. It can only be found in meat, dairy, and eggs. It used to be found in soil and water, but not anymore. Animals have it in their intestines and humans don't. Humans do have it in their intestines, but it's in a weird place that can't be accessed. Animals don't have it in their intestines either. They get it from supplements. If you don't get B12 from either animal products or a synthetic supplement, you will go insane and die from severe B12 deficiency. Or number 10. The whole premise of vitamin B12 is a big fat crock of shit straight from the meat, dairy, and egg industries and the pharma supplement industry. I'll prove it to you. That is one big pile of shit. Magically delicious! Magically delicious! The Vegan Society states that B12 is not produced by plants and that fortified foods and supplements are the only reliable sources for vegans. And what a surprise! They also happen to sell them! But what's really scary is that prominent plant-based advocates are now turning against the vegan diet because of this B12 propaganda. The son of T. Colin Campbell, co-author with his father on the China study, is now saying the vegan diet is insufficient and unnatural because of this requirement for B12. And that high doses of B12 supplements have been linked to cancer. After you see what's behind B12, you'll understand how the whole lucrative debacle started simply as an alleged cure for iron deficiency anemia, easily prevented and treated by mineral-rich plant foods, and originally based on a misdiagnosis of food poisoning. There's bacteria all around me. In my garden, there's plenty of bacteria. I mean, actually, we are made of more bacteria than human cells, so look that up, right? And my dad, from a young age, explained to me that there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. It's only when these bad bacteria get out of whack and we get really sick and messed up, right? We have our good bacteria that's gonna fight off the bad guys. Now, while spirulina, you know, may have some bacterial contamination, if not grown properly, I think overall, if done properly, it's actually quite healthier, quite safer than most things that you guys might be eating, like, right? The majority of you guys out there aren't vegans or vegetarians or all this kind of stuff, but you're still eating tons of animal products. And in a recent study, you know, there's information that shows that if you're consuming animal products, your kitchen is more contaminated than your toilet bowl. Please note that this paper was published in 2008, right about the time there started to be a huge push marketing B12 supplements to vegans. Let's get to the facts behind B12, shall we? In 1824, a very thirsty patient came to see Dr. James Combe, a British surgeon. The patient had diarrhea, he needed to pee a lot, and was extremely pale. Hmm. I would diagnose this as possible food poisoning. 
This doctor was unable to find the cure or the cause, and the patient died. The doctor then personally performed the autopsy, kind of a conflict of interest, but very popular back then, and he found the patient's stomach to be thin. This condition was later deemed a disease called atrophic gastritis, which is basically inflamed stomach mucous membranes. Again, you think it might have been something he ate? So the surgeon decided to call the patient's condition pernicious anemia. Pernicious, of course, because he died. Now, it's important to note that just four years later, this same doctor published a paper called The Poisonous Effects of Eating Muscles. It just so happened that the muscle beds in that particular city were located dangerously close to the sewage outlets. Gee, you think maybe this might have had something to do with that patient's condition? Maybe he ate some toxic muscles that were infected with raw sewage? Yet, instead of acknowledging such an obvious and simple cause, this one dead patient incited a whole slew of doctors to start experimenting to find cures for this pernicious anemia. Now, any halfwit realizes that actual cases of anemia are mostly caused by a deficiency of iron which can be found in tons of plant food, including spinach. Here's a typical article about iron. Now what's ironic is that both shellfish and liver and organ meats are being pushed here. Although it does include some plants in there like spinach, it makes sure to note that the non-heme iron is not absorbed very well, which is just more bullshit. One doctor's treatment involved arsenic which of course killed more patients than the anemia did. In fact, poisons are still the mode of treatment for allopathic medicine today. Then, a doctor by the name of George Whipple, no, not that George Whipple, this one, director of the Hooper Foundation for Medical Research at the University of California, decided he was going to find that elusive cure. In his vivisection lab, he takes a group of dogs and bleeds them out a cruel and idiotic attempt at replicating how humans naturally become anemic. He states that he was purportedly attempting to find a cure for anemia from chronic blood loss. Now who the hell gets that except for dogs having all their blood drained in some psychotic experiment or someone who gets in a car accident every day? Then, going on the theory that the body's liver aids in forming new blood cells, he feeds the dog's raw liver. Now, can you imagine a dog lying there half dead next to a bucket of his own drained blood, hungrily gulping down anything to eat, including raw liver? I can't either. Now, there's no evidence how long these dogs lived. No statistics showing proof that they improved or even recovered. Of course, they all ended up dead. It's vivisection. Yet, this Whipple guy then claimed he'd found a cure for anemia in dogs, which was raw liver. Then, two doctors from Boston happened to hook up with this Whipple guy, who's now moved to New York by this point, and he tells them about this amazing raw liver cure. Then they decide to start a trial with humans, feeding them raw liver. Well, it doesn't take a genius to know that the liver is full of bile, and that's because it's where all the solid waste in the body goes to be filtered. But this is allopathic medicine and vivisection, so there's not much common sense involved. And come to find out, all three of these doctors were given a Nobel Prize for these raw liver experiments. So these two doctors in Boston managed to gather together 45 patients and then fed the human guinea pigs raw liver. Some only lasted for six weeks. Now, I don't know if those died or dropped out from puking, but I doubt they were bled out first like the poor dogs were. Although these two Nobel Prize winners made detailed claims that raw liver visibly improved the health of the patients, the ones that managed to make it through, they then basically admitted that the results were all just conjecture and that the experiment was not conclusive at all. Time may show that the special diet used of liver and similar food is no more advantageous in the treatment of pernicious anemia than any other nutritional diet, they said. What the fuck? They also admitted that the tiny number of cases they'd studied wasn't nearly sufficient to properly determine the effect that it was essential that data be obtained in a large number of cases to be appropriately compared with controls. Sounds like a failure and a waste of time to me. But they got a Nobel Prize, so must be legit. 
come to find out that fruit and iron supplements were also given. So that might have skewed the results a bit, you think? Nevertheless, this discovery was soon confirmed by many physicians throughout the world, as the paper says. This magic raw liver cure for anemia. It makes you wonder who was supplying all this raw liver. Now here's the part of the story where B12 comes in. In 1948, a guy named Smith, eh, that could happen, E. Lester Smith, claimed that he had somehow isolated the anti-pernicious anemia factor the? from the liver of an ox. He then named this mysterious factor, that's right, vitamin B12. He claimed that giving just a tiny bit of this to people prevented relapse. Relapse of what? Then, somebody named Dorothy Hodgkin was employed to prove this vitamin B12 actually existed. In order to achieve this, she took an x-ray picture of a liver. Oh, and she got a Nobel Prize too. Now here's where pharma and the synthetic supplement industry comes in. Because a diet of raw liver makes people wretch and puke, most normal people that is, pharmaceutical companies wanting in on this new miracle vitamin got to work immediately, making extracts of liver in supplements to be used in intramuscular injection. That's right, this is where the B12 shots come in. And, to make it all sound really professional and medical, this magic vitamin was later officially renamed cobalamin, which is just a general term referring to a number of compounds. Now here's the problem. Since these extracts are not actually vitamins and are synthesized from questionable ingredients, they need to go through the FDA to be approved for the market. Oh, but not our special B12. For some reason, it just slips right through. Now, if you look at what happened with what was called vitamin B17, they also tried to skirt around the issue of having to file an NDA, which is a new drug application that's required by the FDA. And they did this by naming their product a vitamin. Sound familiar? But this wasn't a cure for anemia. They claimed their synthesized apricot pit, containing trace amounts of cyanide, cured cancer. And that was the problem, because even if it did work, it would be cutting into the lucrative cancer industry's legal territory of poisons. That's not allowed. And so B17 was officially discredited as a vitamin and declared a hoax. But apparently B12 is different. It's magical. It's an essential vitamin that humans can only get from meat, dairy, or eggs, preferably raw liver, because it kept a group of dying dogs alive a few hours longer. Now some claim you can get this magical vitamin bacteria from eating manure, the dung of farm animals, and that you used to be able to get it from not only the fertilized soil, but water that hadn't been sanitized. Unfortunately, the water that hadn't been sanitized killed people. And who goes around eating animal crap? So now, coincidentally, your only option to get this magic vitamin bacteria is to eat shit or eat raw liver or other animal parts. Or take that magical synthetic supplement made in a drug lab. In summary, I would ask any plant-based doctor who's recommending these synthetic supplements, and they all are, if he or she is at all aware of the history behind it. And if they know that the original B12 was an extract from raw cow's liver to treat anemia. As for those B12 tests that are also very lucrative business, they're meaningless, except to warn you if your synthetic cobalamin levels are too high, which they very well could be if you're taking a high dose daily supplement. If you're taking antibiotics, you are destroying all of your beneficial bacteria. Stop taking antibiotic drugs. There are many, many herbs that leave the good bacteria alone and just get rid of the bad. And if you want extra beneficial bacteria, I would suggest spirulina. It's loaded with iron, too. Or how about nutritional yeast? So, there you go. The entire premise of B12 is a big, fat crock of shit a huge lucrative hoax. A well-balanced whole foods plant-based diet is perfect as is. You can get everything you need from nature, as was intended.